welcome everybody. It's so good to see everybody. You know, um, I wanna, I wanna start with a word of prayer, and I was telling, uh, I was just saying how it's such a joy, I mean, to have these conversations early in the morning. Yes, uh, Father, thank you, Lord, for this day, and thank you for bringing us together. And well, you know, you're the only one that can make this meaningful. I mean. You're the only one that can make this worthwhile. I mean, we're not really interested in just being on here for the sake of being on here. We'll be here to meet you, talk to you, hear from you, experience you. We, we are seeking you. And so, God, I just pray you would give us understanding. Uh, pray that even as I speak, Lord, that you will speak. Because we want to hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I can't get y'all a head nod this morning because what I want to talk about today, I'm going to talk about on Sunday, and I don't want the overlap, so I'm going to give you a handout on Sunday, and the handout on Sunday will have some of the stuff on today. You understand? So I wanted to make that clear, but I hope you got the other handouts that we put up there because we're in a real stream. There's a stream of revelation that's coming. I was saying to, uh, I think that was Reverend Clarence that we were talking before we got started about how the Holy Spirit is always in front. You see, to lead, you have to be in front. The Holy Spirit is taking you into what will be. You can always tell the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is not just in what is happening now. He's always in where things are going. And as we know our theme, you know, I hope you got your calendar because on our calendar, it says at the bottom, it says the wind of the Holy Spirit is bringing change. And that's what this teaching is about. This teaching is about equipping you for what's coming. I mean, th th this is about not what's happening right now, but getting you positioned, getting you of the proper way of thinking so that you can absorb what God is doing and absorb how God is moving. And I was telling, like I said this morning when I was talking to Clarence before we got started, how that you know, those three years ago, God started talking to me about this mindset. And I said to him then, I said, Lord, what's up with this mindset thing and all this talking about the mindset and thinking and all that. And he said, and, and now I realized that he was bringing us that revelation because that revelation equips us to deal with this, this cataclysmic change this um this way of being who would imagine we would be dealing with this pandemic and then all of this turmoil and, and uh man let me tell you if you do not have the appropriate mindset you are going to break down and i'm gonna tell you something we we talk a lot about the pandemic and COVID and all of that, there's a bigger, there's a bigger health problem. And that's mental illness. That's mental disease. I mean, underneath, kind of under the radar, flowing along with this COVID thing, which we're trying to get out of, is that people are losing their minds. People are in a in a weird state of being. They're frustrated, they're depressed, they're, they're, they're alienated. They feel completely lost, okay? And so it's critical, it's, man, let me tell you something. It really boils down to you being in the dimension of the spirit. And uh, by that, I mean, you have to be in a in a in the truth. What is the truth? 
truth is the proper reality. And so that's why we really are emphasizing this because I want to sensitize you. I want you to be conscious. I need you to be aware of how critical and important it is to understand the realm of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the main actor. Amen. And that there is this, there's this, um, this other world. There's the world and realm and reality of the spirit. It's an invisible realm in the sense that it is not visible to your senses, but that doesn't mean it's not real. It is very, it's more real than the physical. It is facilitating, it is affecting, it is causing everything in the natural. When we want to live fully, we have to know and navigate through the realm of the spirit. And don't worry, this is so awesome because we are demystifying the spirit. We're making the spirit not weird and not spooky. I mean, see, there's been a conspiracy on the part of the devil because the devil doesn't want you to operate. See, let me tell you something. When you operate in truth, the devil can't do nothing with you. All of his strategies are based on falsehood, lies. I mean, that's his only way. He, and when you are in the reality of truth, man, it's like he's shooting and he can't hit you. It's like he's talking and you don't hear nothing he's saying. You make him completely impotent and incapable of doing anything with you. That's what Paul was talking about. But he said, putting on the whole arm of God, he's talking about insulating yourself against the wiles. Notice the wiles. He doesn't say the power of the enemy, the wiles of the enemy. What is the devil's strategy? He has to use schemes. He's, he uses trickery. He's deception. See, see, when at the cross, Jesus conquered, he defeated the force. He made a show of them openly, okay? And so technically the devil does not have power. What does he have? Deception. But, but when your loins are girt about with truth, man, it's lights out. <laughs> and so when we talk about the dimension of the spirit, we're talking about the reality of truth. We're, we're talking about um, your mind being in a place where you are experiencing and accessing spiritual stimuli. I mean, I really have been trying real hard lately to get you to conceptualize this because this is important. It's important for you to conceptualize a spiritual world. And I understand that, that you have to use human natural um, illustrations to try to understand because that because we're human. But I do also need you to understand that the spirit is of a different essence and it cannot be fully understood with human definitions and human terms. But, but you have been equipped with a human spirit that can can connect with 
the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. And so I'm chasing a rabbit. I got to get back to my point, but I need you to understand that the activation of your human spirit is critical to you navigating in the realm of the spirit. And that's why we are presenting to you terms and interpretations and understandings of the spirit so that you will develop a familiarity so you will be able over time to number one, be able to discern where your thinking is coming from because that's critical. Your thinking needs to come from your spirit by way of the Holy Spirit. Your thinking does not need to come from your conscious mind or does not need to come from your soulish being, your mind, your will, your emotions. Your thinking should not be based on what you feel, should not be based on what you want, should not be based on what you and your conscious mind think. That is to operate in the flesh. And those that kind of thinking leads to death. To be carly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When we say spiritually minded, we're talking about thinking, thoughts, the content that's coming from your spirit. And, and if you don't know you have a spirit, if you don't even know the difference, then it's hard to distinguish. And consequently, you can get on the wrong track. You see, if you're going to follow the spirit, you got to get on the track where the spirit's going. And if you're going to get on the track of the spirit, you got to get off your track. <laughs> you got to get off your thought patterns. Those have been your main enemy. Your main problem throughout your entire life has been thinking on the wrong track. You have been um, limited by your own desires, your own emotions, and your own thinking. All the damage that's been done to you in terms of how you have absorbed hurt and you have been bound by evil, um, evil patterns of behavior and action, addictions, all that stuff. You know where that was centered at? That was centered in your soulless realm. And so and then I, I should mention also your physical body, because your physical body and your soul is round work together. Okay. Sometimes the original motivation is coming from your physical body. Like for example, when you tired, when you tired, you think different, you desire different. Actually, you desire rest. <laughs> But when you're tired, you are a different person. You, you don't have very much patience. I mean, you're kind of grumpy. You're kind of irritable. You're not even joyful when you're tired. Fatigue inherently makes you miserable. That's why one of the main things you got to avoid is fatigue. Do not, do not disrespect the fact that you need rest. I know a lot of times there's a lot of demands on your life, a lot of people pulling you in different ways. That, but let me tell you something, one of the best ways you manage yourself is you give yourself proper rest. Whatever has to be done can wait until you had time for your body to recover. Whatever you have been doing, so many men of God, women of God, greatly use the God 
prematurely left this world and missed out on fully what they could have become because they did not take into account the fact that their physical body needs rest. Okay? And that ain't, you know, Peter tried to over spiritualize stuff. The reason why you need rest is so that your flesh will not take over. You're trying to avoid putting yourself in a position where your flesh can exert control over your spirit. You have to manage where your thinking is coming from. And you want your thinking to come from your spirit. And some of that has to do with the management of your physical body. That's why this fast is so important. I, and I, I hope even if you can't follow the fast completely the way it's been put out by the word one. <laughs> 7.30, can't eat after 7.30, come on, that's what I eat. <laughs> but you know, it's been such a blessing. I got to apologize for making all that much because I'm going to tell you, this has been the sweetest, one, most wonderful fast. But one of the things like David says in his song, he said, I humbled my soul with fasting. You know, and it's really funny because when you fast, fast, you are training your flesh. Listen, let me explain something to you. You don't run nothing here. You don't dictate to me. I operate by what I choose according to the spirit, and you are not in control, and it don't like it, and it resists, and it complains, but listen, you got to put, Paul said, I keep my body, and I bring it to subjection. It don't go on its own. I got to force it. I got to let them know you ain't running nothing up in here. No, I'm not eating anything. I am not eating a Nestle Crunch bar. <laughs> <laughs> and you can talk to me about that. You know, the other day I pulled open up my drawer and there was a Nestle Crunch. I said, if this ain't the devil right here. <laughs> It was like, hi, hi. <laughs> but you know, I'm going to tell you, that's, that's the power of it. Because it's funny is what Jesus was telling the disciples. He said, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In other words, look, y'all, y'all have to make sure that you don't let the flesh be in control. And you gotta, you gotta, and, and like I said, it'll never be saved. You know, as saved as you are, your flesh ain't never gonna be saved. It can't get saved. Your spirit's saved, but your flesh ain't saved. That's why when you die, your flesh going back to the dust. Because your flesh has no ability to be saved. It ain't gonna never. It, it can be, it can be uh, trained, okay? It can be lessened in terms of its influence, but it's still down there. It's still, I mean, the right situation and it'll rise up. <laughs> That's why you gotta be very careful when you get mad because as saved as you are, you get mad, flesh say, okay, can I, can I take over right here? Okay, I'm gonna, let me handle this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys say, no, 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 go back, get back, get back. <laughs> man, you say something, and then later on you say to yourself, oh, man, what in the world? If that wasn't the worst testimony just now. <laughs> I remember when I was a school teacher, boy, and I, listen, I had, I taught high school. And you talking about equipping me for ministry. And that right there, man, that taught me, man, you got to think on your feet because you want to talk about some manipulating people. You take a bunch of teenagers. I mean, <laughs> they smart. Oh, man. And boy, if I wasn't prayed up, if I wasn't on point, man, they could break it down. And they could make you mad. And so it was good training ground. Because see, now I can deal with y'all because see, I didn't dealt with them. <laughs> But my point is, what is my point? Because I've been chasing this rabbit for so long. My point is, 
that the dimension of the spirit is a reality, okay? It's a way of thinking that's tied to truth. And so I've really been trying to show you how real this is, how, um, how keen it is for you to be aware because you are a human being, but, but there is a spiritual reality. And one of the great things that happened when you were born again is that your spirit was awakened. Your spirit was activated. You now are equipped to sense the dimension of the spirit. You now have the ability to know things nobody told you, to sense things for which there is no physical evidence for. You are now equipped to hear God's voice and to be prompted by his spirit. At times when the spirit inside you, your spirit inside you, gives you special capacity in those three functions. You are known by heart and by now. Communion, that is being able to be ushered into a deep experience with God. Now that your spirit is alive, you can experience God in a way you couldn't before because your spirit is of the same essence as God's spirit, making a connection that's satisfying, meaningful, that just can't be replicated in any other way. I, I didn't go so far as to say that the reason why you don't sin is not because you can't get away with it, because your flesh wants you to sin. But once you have tasted of the heavenly gift, it's like, I don't want to sin because I don't want to lose my experience. What I'm experiencing in God is so satisfying, so pleasurable, enjoyable, that I don't want anything to mess that up. And I'm going to tell you something. The worst feeling, the worst feeling a Christian has is when they are in sin. I don't know if you messed up recently or whatever, but let me tell you, as you can't feel good at all when you have tasted of the heavenly gift and you are in God and then for whatever reason the flesh gets you and you turn to sin, the most miserable people in the world are people walking around calling themselves backslides. Man, let me tell you, that's a feeling I don't ever want to feel. And the thing about hell is when you go to hell, you are totally cut off and there isn't even an opportunity for you to ever stop being miserable and having that terrible feeling. <sighs> And I'm, I'm just telling you that because I want you, sometimes when you are in the spirit, you might not fully appreciate what a great thing it is to have a clear conscience. Man, that is such a peace. I really believe peace comes from a clear conscience. I mean, a sense of well-being. I mean, you might be in a whole lot of trouble. I mean, I'm talking about your circumstances. Might be a lot going on, turmoil, whatever. 
But when you're in the spirit, <laughs> it's like Paul said, whatever state I am, I'm in a state of contentment. The greatest thing. I didn't go so far to say that when your spirit is activated in communion, at times, it's almost like you're in an out-of-body experience. I mean, you can go so deep in worship. You can go so deep in worship that your conscious mind is sitting there saying, come back. <laughs> come back. Your conscious mind is so dormant you're not even aware of being in the natural world or being even in the physical world. You're in a you're in a way of thinking where you're you're just in the heaven. You're in the heavenly of heaven. You in the you the you in the holy place. No, not the holy place. The holy of holies, beyond the veil. And listen, I'm not trying to be spooky and nothing like that, but I'm telling you, don't settle for the outer court and don't settle for the holy place. Go in first. Go all the way inside. And I know we associate emotion. I'm even talking about deeper than your emotion. I'm talking about spirit with spirit. What they say, deep calling unto deep. Woo, I'm chasing this rabbit, ain't I? Let me work my way back. <laughs> and then the intuition, the activation. Now, this is also very, very important. From a practical perspective, you need to be able to discern what's in the spirit so you can have a greater capacity to manage and handle things in the natural. Believe it or not, it is your intuit, intuitive capacity to be led of the spirit that enables you to master the physical and human circumstances in life. And because you're born again, you have this sixth sense. If you will, if you will activate your spirit, you will always have the accurate perception of reality. You will always see things in truth and in the way that they are. You will always be in a um, advantageous position because you have clarity. You have keen perceptibility. I mean, you can't be deceived and tricked. You can't be thrown off because you see exactly what's going on. The only way the enemy can ever get you is if you ever closed your spiritual eyes. I don't know why you would do that. But if you ever turned off your spiritual intuitive powers, that's why he does stuff like try to make you mad, try to distract you, try to get you into yourself because when you are operating fully by your intuitive spirit, it's like it ain't even no competition. You, you ain't even in a state of mind where he could even do anything to you. And that's your spirit. I'm not saying your spirit can predict the future, but I will tell you this. When you led of your spirit by way of the Holy Spirit, you are always equipped for whatever happens. You might not know what's going to happen, but when it happens, 
it's like your spirit just, you know, just takes you on through it. Ain't no panic, ain't no concern. Because the spirit knew this was going to happen. The spirit equipped you and prepared you for it. And the spirit just makes it so that you ain't even got to get ruffled about it. You know? And that's not to say that sometimes he doesn't tell you. Sometimes he does tell you. Sometimes they say, you know, they're going to do this at work today. Just be ready for it. And they ain't nothing to it. Don't even pay attention to it. Yeah. It's funny because I'm telling you this, but you already know this. I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord, man, you know, you got to help me. People ain't going to understand. He said, look, you overstate your significance. <laughs> Said, you, you ain't telling them something I ain't already told them. He said, What you're doing is confirming what they already know. Do you think you think you don't know what I talk to? <laughs> it ain't gotta be straight. He say, look, they know when you when you talk about this, they know exactly what you're talking about because they have lived this. They know about having premonitions about things. They know about times when they sensed something and they don't know how to, why they sensed it or times when they did things. And even at the time when they were doing it, they were saying, why am I doing this? And later on, they realized, whoa, it's a good thing I did that. You know, it's like time when the Lord, like what, what, what you get ready to do so, you go ready to go somewhere. You say, I'm going to go over here and such and such. And then as you're going, the Holy Spirit said, go over here. And he wasn't like it was a big, see, a lot of people try to act like when the Holy Spirit is leading or moving, there's some major event. It's like all of a sudden the heavens open and then there's this sound of a mighty rushing water. <laughs> You know, and, and you know, then all of a sudden I felt myself floating in the air. When the Holy Spirit talks to you and leads you, it's so natural, your conscious mind don't even know what's going on. You don't even know. There are times when you say something out your mouth, right? And you're just talking. You're just like, well, nah, 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 nah. something that comes out of your mouth that when you say it, you hear it. It's like when you say it, you hear what you say, and you're like, whoa. And it's like there's an that's an answer, it resonates in you. That's the spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. See, you're a whole lot more spiritual than you realize. <laughs> Can I tell you something? You have made it because of how the Holy Spirit has been leading your spirit. And, and, and I mean, I was trying to work my way back, but I'm just gonna go ahead and chase this rabbit if y'all don't mind. <laughs> but you know, when you read the Bible and you see the people in the Bible, the people in the Bible were always interacted with the dimension of the spirit. I mean, Joseph, you know, we talk a lot about Mary and all other people in the Bible, but you know, with the birth of Jesus, but Joseph, man, Joseph need to, need to get Joseph his due because when Joseph found out, and Brother Mark and Tia, they did such a great job. When Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, whoa, wait a minute, here we supposed to get married? You already done, done that. But guess what? He had a dream. He had a dream. And in that dream, the spirit told him, marry that lady. You better marry that lady. And she ain't pregnant from no man. She pregnant from the Holy Ghost. And, and when Herod talked to them wise men, he worried about the new heir, you know, the Messiah. And he started killing babies. Say he was gonna, he started decide he's gonna kill baby before he started. 
the Holy Ghost told Joseph, move to Egypt. Jesus was in Egypt when all that was going on. And then the Holy Ghost told him in another dream, come back. <laughs> the people in the Bible were interacting. That is the norm. That's the norm. That's not weird. That's not kooky. You know? The devil just tried to use, you know, he wants to make it so that it's uh, associated with ghosts and goblins and weird and da Because he doesn't want you operating. He don't want you. Let me tell you this about Jesus. If you read, if you read in the Bible, Jesus very rarely yells. Jesus isn't acting kooky. He isn't announcing the spirit. Is, he was just talking real natural and normal. He was just following and doing his work. And that's why it's important because basically all of his thinking is coming from his spirit. And you know how Jesus ministered to people? He ministered to people spirit to spirit. That's why he was a prolific healer. Because he always addressed what was spiritually going on. He always ministered to what was going on in the way a person thought in their spirit. So, and, um, okay, let me work my way back. I done just about spent my whole time with that. That rabbit went all through the metal. <laughs> because, you know, I want you to understand the spirit world. And I want you to be conscious of the spiritual world. Because when we talk about the spirit world, we're talking about a way of thinking. Okay, we talk, we need to associate thinking with spirits. We need to understand that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. I was telling you the other day, Holy Ghost woke me up the other day and told me, he said, he said, the Holy the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit's identity. Now let's think about that for a minute. The truth is the Holy Spirit's identity. It doesn't say that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. Clearly, the Holy Spirit has power. He shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost has come upon him. But that's not who he is. He is not power. Power is what he does. It's not who he is. Love, the Holy Spirit spread abroad in our hearts by love. God is love, okay? But the Holy Spirit is truth. Love is what he does. Love is the motivation for what he does. But his identity is true. That's very important. Why is that so important? That's important because if the Holy Spirit is true, that means the critical element is what I think. Why? Because I have to think truth. Truth is not accessible to me except by way of my mind. I cannot interact with the spirit if I don't think truth. That is the wavelength that the Holy Spirit is on. The Holy Spirit is on the wavelength of truth. I cannot wait until we get back to in person because I got some demonstrations for you. Because I'm committed to you understanding how this works. 
and understanding that if the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, what I think in terms of thinking truth is how I operate in the dimension of the spirit. I think I shared with you already how that uh, demonic spirits are ways of thinking. For example, you know, there are a whole lot of times in the Bible where it talks about a spirit of something. A spirit of something is a way of thinking about something, okay? Demonic spirits take on a particular attitude, a sin, some kind of obsession. That's how you can have like a spirit of fear. Well, no, Paul told Timothy, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. The way of thinking, of dread, of intimidation, of panic, of feeling threatened. That's what a spirit of fear is. And that's how I'm thinking. Okay, if you have a spirit of infirmity, you know, the woman who was bent over or the man by the pool. Bible says they had a spirit of infirmity. What is that? A way of thinking that is infirm. Infirm meaning feeble, meaning weak, meaning incapable of, of exercising your will to, to know what you want to do, but you can't do it because you're too weak. There's some, some weakness, some area of disconnect between what you will and what you are capable of doing. I mean, it's like the spirit of bondage. What's that? A way of thinking where you feel bound. It's so funny how the children of Israel, they got freed up from their physical bondage to Pharaoh, but they were never able to change that spirit of thinking like a slave. A whole generation died in the wilderness because they could not grasp being free. God had to start over. Sometimes it's like I was talking to a brother one time. He had been in prison, right? And he had been in prison for a long time. Precious brother. Precious brother. And he got saved in prison. And uh, I was talking to him and he just really, I got so much wisdom from him because he was telling me how that when he got out of prison, he realized he had been so conditioned by the life in prison. He said it took him years before he even could, could think like a free person. Even though he was out of the prison, he still thought like a prisoner. I was like, whoa, that'll preach right there. <laughs> Put that in my sermon, you know? Because it's so important to understand that now that you're saved, now what is God doing? God is teaching you how to live safe and live free and to raise your consciousness. And so, um, man, I tell you, <laughs> this ain't going at all the way I had planned, but that's because the Holy Ghost is in control, you know? I did pray that the Lord would take over and he show hands. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit, okay, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, see, so when you have the Holy Spirit as being what you are to think in terms of truth, then you understand why it's so important. It's so important that if I'm going to operate in a dimension of the Spirit, I think I operate in the dimension of seeing things how they are. And the way that I think must be that I must see the dimension of truth. I must perceive reality. I must be able to know the difference between physical, human, natural, and spirit. And the only 
way that happens is through your spirit. I mentioned communion, which is the consciousness of God. We got to live with a consciousness. I mentioned intuition, which has to do with your discerning spirit as opposed to natural. You see, when you operate through your spirit, you're at a distinct advantage over anybody that opposes you, anybody that comes after you. It's like whatever they bring against you, because you're in the spirit, it's like it checks whatever they try to do. When you're in the spirit, you are calm, you're in command, your mind is operating clearly, and you can't lose. I mean, it would be in anybody's best interest to leave you alone because you can't be broken down when you come coming from your spirit. I mean, when you look at how Jesus dealt with the religious leaders, it's always one step ahead of them, always. Every time they had an exchange with him, they went away disappointed. Why? Because he was operating from the dimension of the spirit. And as you start to operate in the dimension of the spirit, stuff that used to bother you will not bother you anymore. I'm telling you, people that used to get on your nerves, you just laugh at them. I mean, don't make, don't make fun of them. I'm just saying. <laughs> they don't bother you. I mean, you're like, whatever. Yeah. Because when you get in the spirit, you won't get into the natural. Now, let me tell you this. The contrast between the dimension of the spirit and the dimension of the flesh is that the flesh is a false reality. Spirit is the true reality. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean that when you are operating in the dimension of the spirit, you're seeing things the right way, the correct way. Okay. When you're operating in the flesh, you're not seeing things in the right way. You're looking at things from a false reality. That's why you're all upset. That's why you're all nervous. That's why you're worried. That's why you're out of sorts. That's why you're upset. Because you're looking at something from something that is not true. But when you operate in truth, you don't panic when something happens. Because you see the truth that God is in control. Your spirit holds you in a state where you can stay calm, cool, and collected. Why? Because you see something that's not even visible to the situation. That's how Jesus could sleep during a storm, a violent storm, a water on the boat. So how did he do that? He, the disciples said, don't you see the storm? Don't you care that we perish? That's what they were seeing in the situation. Jesus was seeing another reality. Jesus was seeing a reality that made him realize we're going to the other side. And when you start operating the dimension of the spirit, it's like you operate in a reality where you're not, not overreacting to things that are going on and things that are happening. You cease to have fear. You're not worried. See, it's a false reality that anybody has power over you. That's a false reality. But sometimes a person will make you think they can do you harm. And for example, let's say on the job, your boss will try to make you think, you know, it's up to me whether you get a promotion or not. If you believe that false reality, yeah, you will be scared. You will be upset. You'd be like, I can't believe he's doing this to me or she doing this to me. And she and you get all worked up about her. But let me explain something to you. That's false reality. Promotion don't come from the East or the West. Promotion come from the Lord. The Lord is the one that's going to promote me. I don't know. Is Danielle on here? I'm a Danielle. Let me tell you, Danielle. Hope she don't mind me using her testimony. 
but Danielle was on her job. And uh, this boss was trying to be mean to her and be real hard on her and stuff. And she was talking to me and Brenda one day. And me and Brenda were just talking to her, you know, whatever. The Holy Ghost told me to tell her that that guy was going to be gone before she was. I just, we were just talking. It just came up in my spirit, just blurted out, right? It wasn't like, thus saith the Lord, the Lord tells you this. <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. It was just, it just came out. Even after I said it, I thought to myself, hmm, really? You know? Do you know the next day? Was it the next day, baby? It was the same day, Daddy. Oh, you are on here. Same day. Yeah. Same, Y'all excuse me. Same day. Same hey, day. Shay, Shay. Hi, Daddy. Daddy. You know, <laughs> the same day okay. she went to work. If I should let her tell it. Danielle, real quick. Because it's 651. Tell me what happened. <laughs> the same day I, I walked into work and one of my coworkers, before she even said hello, she looked at me and she didn't know any of the problems I was having with my boss. She looked at me and said, I just want to let you know your site lead is resigning. And I literally buckled at my knees. He left um, officially three days later. He was out of there. Yes. And see, the thing about it is, you know, Brina and Danielle started looking at me like I was weird. So they were like, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I had to tell them, I said, look, I'm the same dude. I cannot take credit for that. As we were just talking, the Holy Ghost just said that. And that's how natural it is. Believe it or not, natural. you are coming into a place, right? where it's gonna seem more natural for you to speak through your spirit than to speak through your conscious mind. It's gonna be more comfortable. And I'm not saying you're gonna be cuckoo and you know, you're gonna be you know, weird. You know, we're not gonna start calling you mother somebody. No, but I really believe that the dimension of the spirit is going to be more normal than your conscious mind. You feel more at ease when your spirit is working than when your conscious mind is working. This is what God is taking. That's why the wind of the Holy Spirit is taking us into what will be you understand me? <laughs> you are being equipped for change. There's some things God's going to do in your life. And you're going to be like, whoa, man. But guess what? Your spirit is going to be so ready for it. You're going to literally morph into a different kind of person and do things it's almost like an out-of-body experience because you're like who am who how am i doing this how did i know this you see it is a shift from your conscious mind to your subconscious a shift from your brain to your spirit a change. And as I said earlier, it all comes from where the thinking is coming from. Because the Holy Spirit is only operating through your spirit. I mentioned communion. I mentioned intuition. I ran out of time. But I got to talk about conscience. Because conscience is this distinguishing between what is real and what is true. It's equally as significant as the other two. Because when you operate by the spirit, you operate in what is right for you to do. This raises you to a place where you are in a vantage point with God 
But God can literally lead you and direct you in the right way. Your decision making is based on going toward truth and not anything else. This is where your motivations come from. And your motivations are the most important part of how and what you think. And I got to stop right here because I don't run out of time. <laughs> but listen, I want to pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you because you've taken us into a way of perception where there are no longer any fears. There are no longer any doubts. You've taken us into a dimension where everything we haven't been able to do suddenly becomes possible. At the answer to going into places we've never been is entering into a reality that we've never thought. Thank you for awakening, enlightenment. Thank you for truth that has come to set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.